opens the door on a college basketball season slam jammed with color and excitement. Friday, the ball gets rolling with a sparkling triple header from the Dodge Big Apple NIT. Then Saturday, the Hall of Fame tip-off classic gets Duke against Kentucky. The color and excitement of live college basketball and ESPN. The right combination. Welcome back to the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan, and we are right smack dab in the middle of four-wheel truck competition. Well, next up is Phil Carlton, and this is Philly's Paycheck, so named because probably more than a dollar of Phil's hard-earned money is in that truck. Well, there's no doubt about that. 1977 Chevrolet 510 Supercharged Chevrolet motor under the hood, and it's taken several of Philly's paychecks to put this piece together. But the piece you've got to have is a full pull. You need to put the front tires on the pavement at the other end. On its way, it's a good hook. It's a very good hook. Good hook. A good hook for Philly's paycheck. Boy, knocked right on the back door of Warren's boss in the special, but if you don't think he meets, no one let him in. You know, interesting pull because he didn't really build his ground speed to a, a real point until about halfway down the track. That same thing basically Alan Gaines did. Held back, held back, but had the horsepower when it came time to ask for it and receive it. See, it looks like he's asking for it here and it's not happening, but all he's doing basically is timing when he's going to just let it all hang out. Truck hooks right there, and when it hooks, it just goes like a rocket on down the track. And look at him right in here, Ken Brew. I don't think the truck's hurting at this point. Now it's beginning to fall off a little bit as the sled brings him to a stop. Day one, Phil did a great job with that pull. Great pull for Phil Carlton, 205 feet even. And a nice effort for the young man out of Mantua, Ohio. Well, here is Ricky Bell behind the wheel of Bad Intentions. And you know what the road to you know where is paved with. How about a beautiful truck? Yes, it is. My heaven, this truck is just beautiful. Starts with a very brilliant gold orange on the front. And well, this is where the driver's personalities come out in. It's, it's the way they design the outward appearance of their truck. All the work goes underneath the hood, and a lot of work goes outside on the cab. Fades to a brilliant candy apple red, and then to a black cherry on the back of it. Absolutely beautiful. Well, he might be driving bad intention, but uh, the intention right here for Ricky Bell is to go the full pull and catch Alan Gaines. And he's got every intention in the world of doing it. Let's see if he can. Not going to be there. Look at the front tire. Look at that front tire on, the, on that, Ken. Talk about low tire pressure. They've got the tire pressure down on that tire, trying to get the bite of the eyes wrinkled in the lower right-hand corner. And see the squeeze around the edge. That's where they screw that tire on the wheel to keep it from spinning as it goes down the track. Well, Ricky Bell, I think, waits a little bit long to call on the motor. Now, he's into it right in this area, and that's somewhere around the 75 foot mark. I believe he should have backed in there and, and got a hold of the track about the 50 foot. It, it could have helped him on the other end, maybe another 10 or 15 feet, but all in all, it's a very fine pull for bad intentions. Bad intentions, 187 feet and one inch for Ricky Bell out of Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA. Well, uh, I don't think it's any secret why this is called the Little Red Wagon. 86 Dodge, 496 Hemi engine, Pulaski, Tennessee. Not too far from Nashville himself. Dodge, Dakota. A very fine truck, 496 Hemi. Let's see how he ends this up. First Dodge Dakota that I've seen in competition of these new little trucks. Just so funny seeing that wheelbase on the cab so short and the frame so long. He calls early. a good pull. Larry does it. You could say Tom does it. Larry will be up here in a little bit, but the little red wagon had a nice pull. 
And, uh, you know, if you look at that, it seemed like he was playing a little bit with the track. We had a combination that actually worked better. And I think he had a vision for it. I think he called for the motor, but the motor never came up. The clutch didn't hook up. The motor wouldn't, the RPM on the motor wouldn't come up. But what happened is it was just the right amount of power to turn the tires. And you notice at the end of it that it really lugs down. It really powers down on the end of it. But it powers down to the point so that every time the tires go around, they're grabbing more ground. Look at this. He doesn't stop. He just keeps going very slowly. He's not and right at the end. It breaks loose and spins out. He's up amongst the leaders with the little red wagon. Tom Dusick, Pulaski, Tennessee, 214 feet, 9 and 1 half inches. And from Tom, we go to Larry. Larry Dusick. This is an 88 Dodge, 432 Hemi. A little bit smaller Hemi than Tom's, but Larry has got Big Daddy Magic. We'll see if he can pull a rabbit out of his hat tonight. Well, no doubt he saw the uh, little red wagon truck run. He's seen Allen run. He's got a good idea of what it's going to take, but he's on the right-hand side. No one's been over there. He's got great ground speed. That is so unfortunate. I thought he was headed for a full pull. He was headed for a full pull. And somewhere between the motor and the transfer case of the rear end, it went apart. And when it did, it cost the motor. Look at this. He's got excellent ground speed. He's over on the right-hand side of the track. No one's been over there. He's closer to the track than the outside edge of the track than anyone has been. And he is really getting great ground speed, just hooking and cooking down the track. But the truck absolutely lets go, and when it does, the motor, there, the motor goes way up, and you see the smoke come out of the engine. The reason the smoke coming out of the engine, the engine was sitting there freewheeling. So somewhere along the drive line, there's parts to be found that weren't there earlier, and I think we've also heard a motor reel back. Ted Sharp's up now in the Valley Shaker. An 86 Chevy, 510 under and through the hood and from the same hometown as Allen Gaines, Georgetown, Kentucky. There we go. man drives for Alan Gaines when Alan Gaines cannot take his super modified out to competition because he's somewhere else with his other truck. This guy drives for Alan. This guy drives like Alan. You can see why Alan would put Ted Sharp in his truck. Let's watch him. I mean, what can you say? This guy's got it dialed in. Everything's hooked right. He doesn't have an overabundance of ground speed, but he has enough to do what he set out to do when he left with the sled such a delicate balance between speed and power, torque, reading the track light, and it all comes together here for Ted Sharp. Watch him right there on the end of it. Ted doesn't let up. He's not going to let up until he sees that flag. It's going to be a full call. Alan Gaines, your good friend and hometown compadre, has just forced him into a pull-off. Here is the Mr. Diamond T. This is Eddie Powell from the green Kentucky. Eddie Powell's got the capabilities of going three ways in his pull-off. He can make it go all the way out. Oh, boy, oh, Eddie. so near and yet so far away. Eddie Powell was saying, hey guys, this thing can, can work both sides of the track. Isn't that a beautiful truck, a 1939 Diamond T? Diamond T, that is the, the manufacturer's name, Diamond T, obviously not in production anymore. Mr. Diamond T was no Kubrick Zirconium tonight. He was the original thing, 207 feet, nine and a half inches, but it's not good enough to get into the super modified pull-off. 
Dollar Child's 35th anniversary sale is on now. But hurry, it's the final week to save up to 50% on our huge selection of ceramics, vinyl, even wall coverings. This handsome ceramic, only 64 cents. Every in-stock Armstrong Sundial Solarian Sheet Vinyl, just $9.99. This fashionable ceramic, only $139. And decorative bouquet wall tiles, just $1.99. It's the final week to save up to 50% at Color Tile's 35th anniversary sale. But hurry, sale ends Sunday. Come now and bring your beauty home. Wow. Finish that table yourself? Yep. Beautiful job. How'd you get such professional results? Czar polyurethane. Good choice. Czar is easy to use. It's self-leveling so you get a smooth, even finish. And Czar is tough. Marks and spills wipe clean with a damp cloth. And Czar never needs waxing. But would you recommend Czar wood finish for first-timers? I am a first-timer. Czar comes in a variety of finishes for the look you want. For a free brochure and the dealer nearest you, write us today. Incredibly delicious and so full of energy, Planters Nuts are one irresistible snack. Once you hear it, Planters, you gotta get near it. There's a whole lot of nuts going on. Planters Nuts are the best you can find. Defense, depth, and Danny Perry give Duke the ingredients for a national title. The first step, Kentucky at the Hall of Fame Tip-Off Classic, Saturday afternoon, live on ESPN. The Super Modified Pull-Off, Orange Blossom Special, with Alan Gaines behind the wheel, and the Valley Shaker, Ted Sharp, Gaines' big buddy. I guess it would be senseless to ask which one you like in the pull-off, wouldn't it, Ken Brew? I'd say it's, it's, it's tough to make a choice. You've got the student, and you've got the teacher. And school's in, here in Pontiac, Michigan. Alan Gaines! the full distance. Mike, did they reweight the sled? Oh, uh, the did they load the boat on them that time? The sled was topping out somewhere around 150 foot mark, maybe even before that. And you can see the distance that Alan Gaines laid down. Look at the box all the way up at the top. So they're really putting the weight on them. Like pulling a barge down the Ohio River without water. Yeah, you got that right. Alan Gaines has set the standard now that Ted Sharp will have to equal Watch Alan Gaines waste no time with this pull. He knows the sled's heavier. He knows how much weight's on it. And instantly, he asked for horsepower. This truck delivered and delivers just right out of the back. Really screams out the other end. Good ground speed all the way up right here about is the time at the box top. And you can see the truck go to pulling down, lugging down the friction, building up between the pan and the track and the truck running out of horsepower. Can he do it? Alan Gaines in the pull-off, 178 feet, 10 and a half inches. And that is what the Valley Shaker has to be. Ted Sharp. Ted Sharp? He was as sharp as a barbershop razor on a scruffy beard on his last pull. It was full tilt boogie. And now he has to beat the mark that Alan Gaines has set. He can do it. He really can. He's got everything right on the truck. He showed that earlier. A lot of confidence in the truck. And you know he's got to be a good driver. Alan Gaines wouldn't send him in the Orange Blossom Special when he can't go. Well, he would like nothing better to do than to take first prize here in the Super Modified. Oh, would they have fun tonight. Alan wouldn't hear the end of it. No, he wouldn't. And, and not just tonight, but for a long time. He's waiting for the green flag. Somewhere 200 feet down at the other end of the track. A lot of, and he has to drag a sled that has been reweighted since he pulled the last time. This is this is isn't helping him at all. There's a lot of heat in the engine, as you can see by the steam coming out of it. They're trying to wait for someone to clear the door on the other end of the track, and the motor sitting there running. There's no water in the engine. It, it might be Allen down here blocking them. Well, it could be, and it's done. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think he may. You know, I, I look for him to shut that motor down at any time. Now he's got the green. Let's watch him. Sally Shaker, hooked up. On his way, he's good, he's good. He can do it. He can do it. Look out, I think he did it. I believe he did. I think he is one, but we'll wait 
for the official measurement. Well, it may have cost the motor, but I don't think at this point it makes any difference. Oh, he's got all week to work on it. Ted Sharp, 189 feet and 8 inches, and with that, Ted Sharp has won the pull-off. It was just super, the super modified competition. The Valley Shaker, Ted Sharp, out distancing his teacher, Alan Dobbs, and winning the pull-off with the Little Red Wagon coming up third. Watch out. The wildest show on wheels is about to roar into your living room. It's the ultimate home video. Blood, sweat, and gears. Bigfoot takes on the toughest full-blown competition ever before facing his greatest test when Sergeant Slaughter and his battle battalion challenge Bigfoot to an all-out tug of war. So if you want gear jamming, car crushing, down and dirty action, get your credit card ready to order your video now. Call 1-800-351-1500. Blood, sweat, and gears. <laughs> I said send me the lease! The lease! End these mistakes in communication. From now on, don't just say it. Put your request on paper and send it on a Tiffany Bowes vaccine machine. The message is there. And the answer is back in seconds. Real Tiffany Bowes. Think of a first in fact. For details, call 1-800-421-7800. Boy, if you like full-blown power, you're going to love this. The Bud Boss on the track, Gary Collins, El Dorado Springs, Missouri. Two blown, 2,000 horsepower, Keith Black Hemi engines. It's a four-wheel drive vehicle. And I'll tell you what, even if only two wheels are in gear, we could still haul that sled from here to Joplin, Missouri and back. The Bud Boss, it is a showpiece. And right now, the crowd is in for a treat because this is probably the strongest pulling vehicle on the road today. He's got the green flag, and he is off to the races. Right out the door! Thank goodness for brakes. Gary Collins has driven it out the door. Oh, that is superb. And the crowd loves it. An absolute show-stopping performance by Gary Collins in the Bud Boss. Well, this is what they came to see. Monster trucks. And right now, we've got two of them side-by-side side on the track. Big, Bigfoot against the Night Stalker. We also have Mike Galloway down on the floor of the building. And Mike, you're in for a show down there. You're right down where the action is. Well, Ken Brew, this is the place to be if you can be here and you want to get a good view of the action. This is the place you want to be. They're going to go down the track, make a U-turn. They'll come over the outside step. Jim Kramer out of the lead. Kramer with a big jump off the line. Watch this turn. It's very important. Kramer knows how to do it. He's around the first set of cars, and he doesn't let up. Over the cars. Oh! just now reached. Kramer's still on the move. Kramer's making it work for him. Watch Kramer's him. got it in a bag. If something doesn't go wrong, he backs out of it. He's going to save it for the next round. Bigfoot goes on in the first round of competition. And there's Jim Kramer behind the wheel. Ken Brew, Jim Kramer got a jump off the line. A lot of action off the line. And probably five, six truck links in the lead as he went down the track. Then he made the swing to the outside turn, never letting off of the throttle. Hit the first set of cars, still not lifting off the throttle. Down to the end of the track, beautiful job, but he backed out of it on the last set of cars. And when he backed out of it on the last set of cars, he was just saving it for that last round of competition. He knows he's got to go on. All right, Ken Brew, this next race coming up. Lone Ranger against Bigfoot. Could be an upset in the making. Gary Bauer wants a win, and he wants it real bad. Short wheelbase truck. Let's see what happens. Jim Kramer knows what's happening. Kramer covers in three links down the front chute. But watch the turn. Kramer shoots wide on the outside. Long range is close on the inside. Bauer won't let up. Oh! Kramer is climbing over the first set. Bauer, right short. Now, Kramer is already into the turn. Bauer is about five lengths behind. He's in trouble. Bauer's in trouble. No, he's all right now. He's 
wings make the turn. Bigfoot, he's going to back out of it. He's going to hold out. He better not let off too much. Bauer is coming on. Bauer is coming on. Bigfoot. Oh! Bigfoot takes the flag. And again, Mike, we saw Kramer off the line quick. Winning the race at the start, I think, was the key for Kramer in that particular go-round. All right, Mike, now we're going to make some tracks. We got the Stormtrooper against Barefoot Tracks. And right there is Fred Schaefer behind the wheel and with the safety cutter. Never count out Fred Schaefer in Barefoot Tracks. Supercharged with Chevrolet. And Fred Schaefer runs a, a very crisp right on the edge motor super horsepower comes out of it now the stormtrooper truck mike tell me a little bit about that it's ken ewan's new truck out of oklahoma 1988 ford ranger supercharged engine on the back side of it and this will only be the second time that this vehicle has been out so let's watch the race ford versus shell a stormtrooper and there for red shakers out When they went by me, Ken Ewan had just a little bit of a lead, but I think that's vanished. Fred Schaefer seems to have it now. Schaefer's on the throttle. Watch him. Schaefer over the first set of cars. Oh, he doesn't let up. He's taking a beating. The floor is just vibrating on the floor of the zone. Fred Schaefer is lined up for that last set. Now watch him go. Fred Schaefer holds on. Whoa! Fred Schaefer takes the win. Mike, Mike, those trucks are so difficult to, to steer. Uh, people don't realize it's not a steering wheel in there. It's a series of, what, what do you call them, pulleys, sticks? What do they drive, What do they steer those things with? Well, they've got steering sticks that they're using to control the vehicle with. Fred Schaefer's truck is leaking a little bit of fluid out of it. It looks to be some antifreeze, so he may have built a little bit too much heat in that truck, but he hammered the stormtrooper. So Fred Schaefer goes on in the round. He will advance. Stormtrooper goes on a trailer. Well, it's on. And we'll be right back here at Pontiac, Michigan in just a moment. America's leading consumer products rating service says one battery. Megatron 34 from Interstate tested best. It ran circles around better known brands and won by a mile. Megatron 34 from Interstate. Ask for it. it's routine maintenance to others it's an act of love if you truly appreciate fine machinery you protect it with pure later filters come on get going breakfast is ready at burger king we'll make a fresh crust sandwich or bagel sandwich just for you we do it like you would do it but we do it like we do it at burger king Saturday, Major Harris and the West Virginia Mountaineers meet Syracuse. Then the Miami Hurricanes try to blow past LSU. Two great games live Saturday starting at 6 Eastern on ESPN. So we got a little bit of a showdown here. Barefoot is going to go up against Bigfoot. You know, Mike, I really have to wonder what General Patton would say if he could see these today, huh? I don't think he would recognize them. It is truly showdown time. Barefoot on the inside, Bob, Bigfoot to the outside. Bob Chandler and Fred Schaefer. And who would have thought if you'd have told them a couple of years ago they would be racing track vehicles, they wouldn't have believed you. I guess they know each other, huh? Oh, very well. Chandler covers it. doing some heavy catching up. He is. Red Schaefer is on the way. He's trying to catch him. Chandler's not letting off this time, though. Woo! Chandler's just flying. Chandler's right now has making the turn as Red comes off the first set of cars. It's going to be Bigfoot unless something happens. It is. Bigfoot, Bigfoot trapped. Bigfoot has won it. And I got to tell you something, Mike. I think Barefoot was in it 
up until the point where he made a real, real wide turn. The final turn he made, he really slid wide. Well, if you follow monster truck vehicles, you know who Bob Chandler is. He is one of the leaders in monster truck competition, and tonight he's got a little bit of a twist, and he's going to have to do a little bit of work himself tonight as well. Our Mike Galloway has that story. Mike? Hey, Bob Chandler, it's been a long time since we've seen you in the driver's uniform. It's been about two years, Mike. What are we going to do tonight? I get to drive the fast track, Bigfoot fast track. Now, is this a new uh, Bigfoot vehicle? Yes, I bought this from a guy in Colorado, Lauren uh, Pryor is his name, and it's, uh, we remodified the whole interior, put two Ford 460 engines in it and blown. It's got two transmissions. It's an old Army uh, M84 track vehicle. What kind of body? Uh, the body on top is a 1984 uh, Ford van. Now, Bob, you've driven steering wheel vehicles all your life. What about these sticks? Well, it's a new thing for me, and I hope I can handle it tonight, but it's really pretty easy because all you do is pull a lever, so it's easier than a wheel. Well, we're going to, we're going to, you hope. <laughs> we're going to watch for Bob tonight and see if it's easier than the wheel. Gosh, this is going to be fun. The Beast against Bigfoot Tracks. On the line, the right to race against the monster truck winner. The conventional monster truck winner. Torsion bars, shocks on each one of them. Doug Russell builds the wheel. The man was asleep on the line, but he caught up in a hurry. And now they're side to side as they make the turn. Watch it. The Beast may be in the lead. The Beast may have it. Chandler's got the lead, but Chandler's got to make a turn. Chandler's down the chute. It's head to head. Man, the side by side. Chandler, can he pull it off? Can he pull it off? Oh, man. Oh, oh, Mike, this, this was a race the Beast could have won. But around that last turn, he seemed to stall. Something went wrong with that vehicle. I saw him glancing back over his shoulder into the engine compartment, and something went astray. Mike, let's look at this again. Watch the start. It's the, the beast out in front, but when that happens, Chandler says, I've got to do it and do it in a hurry. Hard, straight shot. Good, quick start. He lets a little bit out on the turns, makes a good swing, and when he does, he's, he's setting pretty on this set of cars. But this Virginia Beach beast is coming back, and he is coming back in a hurry. Now, down at this turn, they're almost nose to nose. They're side by side. Right here is where the Virginia Beach beast, the motor, lays it down on it. Mike looks over his shoulder, knows he's got problems, and Bob Chandler sickles to a victory in that one. A good run for Bob. Well, we had hoped to have Bigfoot track race against Bigfoot, but uh, it overheated. No, no showdown. But let's go down to the floor. Mike Galloway is standing by with a guy who couldn't lose. Mike? Jim Kramer? What was it like tonight? I liked the course. Uh, it was really kind of neat. Got you. Gave you a chance to get around the corners, nice wide corners, get up the speed of the corners, hit the cars, and get over. And, uh, it was interesting. Tank got hot. Couldn't come back in the final round. And the, the burning question, and I probably know the answer, knowing you, could you have beat him? I sure would like to give it a try. Bob Chandler drove the tank, of course, did an excellent job. His first time racing. A hell of a debut, if you ask me. And uh, the tank... Uh, it took a supreme effort by our crew back in the shop, Bob Hell Freeman, Jay Deakman, and Roy Hoosier, even to get the thing here. And the, the tank is, a, as you can see, is a heck of a piece of machinery, a great de basic design by Lauren Prayer, and we took and modified it for racing. I think you're going to see a lot of this tank running fast. Well, now, Jim, that tank is awesome, and you were awesome. But listen, that thing handles extremely well. I mean, it's got a lot of acceleration. He was quick off the line. And uh, he's going to be a handful when it becomes time for, uh, shall we say, the Bigfoot, Bigfoot shootout. Well, I tell you, I run the whole course in four-wheel drive. And up my sleeve here, I had a little trick of uh, maybe going to two-wheel drive, sliding around the corner, getting straight and going. I had one thing left to do, and I was going to pull out the stops and try it, but for another day. Well, maybe next time it'll be the shootout. The thing they'll do now for the Bar Bigfoot track is work on the cooling. That's next. And we'll have a final thought here from the Pontiac Silverdome in just a moment. Wait for something good to happen. Make it happen with the clean, masculine scent of English leather cologne. Some guys have what others want. Some guys have it all. English leather. Some guys have it all.
This is ESPN, the total sports network. Well, there you have it. A full night of pulling power and monster truck racing. I'll tell you, those tank tracks are something else. And this Budweiser U.S. Hot Rod Truck Pull Fall Championship, featuring the Battle of the Monster Trucks, has been brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood aid for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Now, speaking for Mike Galloway, this is Ken Brew saying so long from Pontiac, Michigan. And reminding you that this has been a presentation of Bud Sports through the facilities of ESPN.